and it's a blast off. No, <laughs> All right, we're here uh, on Bikes in the Hood. Uh, I am Mr. Fontaine. We know what it is. We got Dr. Phil in the Bizzle. Hello, thing. hello, hello. Yeah, right, right. yeah. And we're here with OG Pee Wee of the Chosen Few, one of my OGs, one of my teachers, mentors, and idols, all that shit. Thanks for uh, having You already know. Yeah. You already know I was going to bring you up in here yeah. somehow, yeah. some way. Um, but I brought you here, like I said, I just wanted to ask you some questions and whatnot, because to me personally, like I said, we were talking earlier, that Take None, Give None documentary was really your idea. You know what I mean? At least to me it was. It was your idea. Those were your people who came through that gate. Because like I said, we used to jump on them like <laughs> white on rice. You know what I mean? Because we just didn't know. Um, and... You're the one who facilitated all that, even though, you know, we know you took your vacation. To me, you didn't get to have a voice as to, you know what I mean, your time frame and your history and, you know what I mean, your influence on the club and Chosen Few and the set itself in L.A., you know what I mean? You know, just, again, because you weren't here. So that was the concept of bringing you here. Also, so my man Phil can kind of pick your brain with stuff that I probably can't answer for him, that you can you know what I mean? So, yeah. And you already know I got a ton of questions. I be asking. Man, he, 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 he yeah, do, he, too. My seat, but get ready. <laughs> right, right. Um, but like I said, I had wrote, like I told you earlier, I just wrote down a simple list, whatnot, and we just going to kind of freestyle after that. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, when did you join the Chosen Few? I passed up in 1973. 73? Next, uh, couple of months out at 50 years. All right. That's right. Uh, how old were you? I was just old enough to get in the club when I joined the club. I was 21. Oh, okay. So I spent all my adult life in this club. That's right. Um, what kind of bike did you ride back then? Well, back then, uh, I had a Sportster. I had a Stroke Sportster. Oh, okay. It would take me uh, 10 minutes to start that thing. <laughs> It just had a little muscle in it. But once right. they fired up, it went on and it took care of what it needed to take care of. Right, but right. I started on the sports team and I moved around to Panhead, Chevrolet, and Chopper's. It was just bringing fun in. Just slew it in. Right, right. Uh, what made you join the Chosen Few? Like, what attracted you to them? Well, I'm originally from Chicago and the neighborhood that I was raised in was black, white, and Hispanic. Okay. And these were my first playmates. You know, we didn't know nothing about prejudice and all that goofy stuff to some point. We got along. We did. We, we had fun. Right. And that was my brain. You know, later on, as more uh, blacks moved in, subsequently whites for a reason, no doubt. Uh, this is my initial friends and my, my setting on enjoying myself as a kid. And uh, when I came out here, uh, after college, I, uh, I actually came out and visited a buddy of mine that was a teenage motorcycle rider with me. Okay. And uh, he told me to come out. He came out in 72. He came out in 71, I came out in 72. And he said, uh, I'll stay. I said, I'll stay the summer months here. The one of us here and then go back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I'm riding my motorcycle and a t shirt on Christmas and New Year's. I called back and told him to send my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason for me to go back there and get here with no more. Right. <laughs> right. But then uh, fast forward, uh, I hooked up with the few other factors. San Diego was the first one I went on. Uh, and I was going to San Diego. I seen the sign, the, the, the direction. But I was by myself, so I didn't know exactly where I was going. So I seen this cat ahead of me, big Snoopy, breast his soul, he's passed on. Mm -hmm. But I seen him, and I caught up with him. And he took me on into San Diego, and he was a good dude. And so I started seeing, hanging with, with them at, at San Diego, and I said, well, this thing is constructed of black, white, and Hispanic. It right. was about a third when I drove up in San right. too. I said, this is like growing up all over again. Right. This is what I embraced as a kid. This is what I, I like. We got something that society don't have. 
Right. We got all this ethnic groups and we go along. Right. It's a brotherhood. Right. That was the main attraction. People I, about people. I got you. Cycles, but I got So you moved, so you rode bikes before you moved to California? Oh, yeah. I rode dirt bikes. Uh, I did stuck rodeo riding and all that kind of stuff. That's why I do see some of the tricks I that know. I do. I, you know, I know. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was, I was. Testing and proving before I got here. Uh, I got <laughs> you. I got you. And that was actually going to be my next question. How did you learn how to ride a bike? Oh, well, that's another story there. Yeah. Um, as a kid, my father had a, his best buddy had an old full dresser, and they would come down the alley and they'd park it out and they would socialize. And I would always ask them to let me get on it and take me for a ride on the bike. But my feet was too short to touch the pegs. So right. <laughs> he said, well, when you can touch the pegs, then I'll let him take you for a ride. So that time went on, I got a little taller, and I was able to take this ride down the alley with him and back. Right. And after that, I vowed from that age I was going to get one of these bikes. Right. I was going to do this. Well, how old were you and, then uh, when that happened? I was like five or seven when I oh, okay. And I was able to touch the right, right. Yeah, I, that was just in me from then. Right. And uh, as I got uh, older and got in my license, that was my first vehicle. And I told my parents, "Well, I'm still in high school." They said, "Look, uh, I want to get a bike instead of a car." So I go to school and said, "Well, you got to bring the grades up if you're talking about wanting a motorcycle." Right. Yeah, they went from. C's and D's to A's and B's. That was it. I was uh, 15. I was, got my first bike and first license. Because okay. so you can get a motorcycle license uh, at 15 right. in Chicago at that back then. That was it. Back then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. <laughs> right. That's yeah. right. Um, so and then you joined the club with Snoopy, right? So you were yeah, in. Uh, uh, no, Snoopy was in Hollywood. Okay. There, and uh, I came uh, to uh, L.A. Okay. In fact, Shorty Joe uh, was the president at the time when I came in. Right. And uh, he was doing what he called house cleaning. We used, to, we used to do that every year. Every year we go through the books and make sure that everybody's, you know, your license current, your drug insurance is covered. You know, we don't get our stop on the road. You ain't got your paperwork, and they take your bike and stuff. Now we got to be stuck with you. Make sure you, you know, yeah. right. But when we get out there, right. And uh, he said, uh, he took a liking to me. and said, look, I'm gonna sell you a spot. I'm doing my house cleaning now. But I got a spot for you. Right. And uh, yeah. that was it. That was it. Yeah, right. Did you have the prospect, or you just? Oh came? yeah, I prospect. Well, how I long did the prospect, prospect for? I think it was about four months, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, four months. Yeah. It was a long time. I was, I was pumped and ready to do this. Thing. I got you, yeah. So I, I actually did what I was supposed to do. Right. Uh, right. They didn't play with me too much. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, they, they wanted to make sure that uh, that she was enough man to be part of this thing. I got you. Uh, one instance I like to share with, which I didn't understand at the time, they told me to go to the liquor store and... Uh, when I get through, tip the guy a penny. So I went to the liquor store, and I just said, tip my guy a penny, this is crazy. So I'm on my way out, and another prospect was coming in. He said, man, did you tip that guy that penny? I said, no, oh, man, this, you better tip that guy that penny. Because right. he overheard them saying, you know, this is a person. So I went back and tipped the guy the penny. I come in, gave him that stuff, and said, did you tip the guy the penny? Yeah. They walked me back to the liquor store and made sure I tipped this guy this penny. So I said, what is this about? He said, this is not to belittle you or him. If we give you something to do or we need you to do something, we need you to know that you're going to do that right. the way it, we explained you to do it. Because right. this thing could be pertinent, depending on the situation. Yeah. And I understood that. Right. right. And that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, how long did it take you to come into the cabinet of chosen few, like have a position, whether it was role captain, don't matter. I came in, my first position was Sergeant Lounge. Okay. Uh, um, I 
use a stick for like keeping order, right. making things go smooth. And uh, they slid me into that position first, that was my first position. Right. Then I think uh, I went to vice president. Right. LA. And Prius LA. Then vice national. And then on the national president. Right. Over the course of the years. Of course. But those were the officers that I had. I got you. Uh, how many clubs were around when you joined? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Not near by the end of that now. You could almost count them on, on one hand, the, the notable clubs. All right. That's a good question. I got to dig in the archives of my mind. And that was, I mean, was uh, it more than 20? Uh, that might be a close figure, about 20 that was reputable. I got you. At that time. Because a lot of the clubs that, that's been in now was the deal with I can No, of course. Of course. 20-ish, that's about a good number. Okay. 15 to 20-ish. Okay. Okay. Um, this is another question I know a, a million people might ask, especially yes, since yes. you're talking back in the 70s and whatever. Um, did social clubs exist back then? Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't. We didn't, I don't remember social clubs, but we had people that would come and support us. Right, right, of course. Yeah, yeah but, but there was no actual... Actual clubs, no. We call it social club. That came later. Like, what year yeah. do you think that came about? Um, that's a good question as well. well I'm going to say this donation, this came like in the 80s. 80s. About mid-80s, 70s, 80s. Oh, the social clubs yeah. with the ladies and women? They stopped popping up. Right. Uh, but no, there wasn't no more social clubs, I recall. Right, right, when you came, yeah. yeah. The girls would be, they'd just be, I already, right, yeah. you die or something, that was that. You know, that was their <laughs> spot, that was their position. <laughs> right. And they was cool with that. And we right. was cool with that. <laughs> right, hell yeah. Yeah, I could dig it. Um, how segregated was riding back then? Oh. Well, we basically kept to our own. Yeah, right. we did socialize with some of the other clubs, uh, like the Valley Chapter uh, was cool with HA, and HA came out, and we went out to the Valley out to uh, the Sun Valley. I got you. Uh, we socialized with them. The Hessians was around then. We socialized with them. Um, some heathens, I remember those cats. I don't see them that often no more. Right. But they still exist. But basically, we we did us and we did the Dragons and the Soul Brothers. Right. And those were our two main close knit clubs. Right. And certainly the DLs. Right. And yeah, we we kind of we we, we 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 stayed to our own basically. I got you. We did us. We did a lot uh, a lot of camp runs. I got Back you. then. And that's one of the things I miss now that they don't do. Right. I mean, we still got Colorado. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, about yeah. the only one they really keep push, going so. after that. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, but actually, yeah. Colorado's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna it keep is. one thousand. It yeah. It's, I mean, even right now, like you go out there, you have a good time. So, um, did most black clubs get along in L.A. back then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. This thing, basically, bottom line, is a social life. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a recreation. You know? you, 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 got to, you, you got a job, you got your family, got it to then it's a recreation. Now, it turns into a lifestyle because it's that enjoyable. Mm -hmm. that to me. The bottom line is it's, 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 it's a social life. It's to be enjoyed. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, and the reason why I ask it, because, like, in this time frame, we got a lot of... Uh, standoffish, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of posturing when you go to certain dances and functions and uh, things like that. So that's why I asked that, because, yeah. I mean, my, even myself, I try not to do it. I try to get along with majority of everybody, you know what I mean? And those who know me know I'm pretty cool with damn near everybody. Yeah. Um, but that's why I asked that, because at this point, it's like, sometimes feel, some, I think some people feel like that's how it was supposed to go. I, I can explain it like this if I 
back in that in, in my in that era, like I said, we was we were in like one great big box, mm -hmm. and everybody got along because this is people about people about motorcycles. We, we we knew it was a social thing, and we even know brother close knit and all that. Mm -hmm. But we got along. Now it seems as though that people are in these little bitty circles, you know, alienating themselves, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's not as it, it, the close contact is is not there like it was before. So subsequently, I can't really be cool with you if I don't know you, right. or I don't get a chance to know you. Right. And a lot of I see a lot of standoffish. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, as you were saying, uh, yeah, I, I noticed that change. Right. Okay. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you, sir. You got anything you want to ask him? Yeah. Not I, just yet. Not just yet. You sure? Oh, well, I, I, oh, I can yeah, do I, some questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While I, while, I, while I ponder on something real quick. So you, you, you mentioned about the, the social clubs, um, um, you know, today. You know, and I don't know dynamics of different clubs, but being on the outside looking in, it appears like the women are doing a lot of running of some of these clubs based on who they dating or who they're dealing with. Um, now, let's not say when you started, because I, I know that structure was beyond solid, but let's go back 10 years ago, 15 years ago. How was it then compared to what you see now as far as the way the social clubs has really, it's more social clubs than bikes, bike clubs, I believe. Yeah, it was just a hand uh, full of them, uh, like you, like you count them on one hand, the social clubs that was back then. I could just tell the names, it lose me right now. Right. But uh, it, it was uh, it, it far and few in between we would actually see them. Mm -hmm. And now, it's, uh, as you say, it's, it's, it's more social clubs and bike clubs. They want to be on the bike scene with the bike people. With the social set, with the social club, right. Uh, now some of them converted over. As I understand, they started social, and then some of the girls got bikes and started mm -hmm. with bike clubs. But yeah, I start, I noticed a big change in that. I can I see some of the girls coming around now. Just they, 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 they look very well. You know, they represent. <laughs> <laughs> so it represent very well, and then some of them is kind of messy. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Kind of messy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 been a, that's definitely been a change from from then to now. It's, it's just been an explosion of them. Okay. And how and why nobody's governing any of that or talking to right. them, trying to to keep it from getting overwhelming to set. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as men, we, we all love to see, you know, lovely women. No of question course. about that, you know. Of so it's not a knock to no SC club out there or auxiliary. I, I just believe that, you know, when you wear MC, and I'm not talking about a female MC. Yeah. I'm talking about men. From what I used to hear before I came, the structure was so solid, so good. And it, it was like not just the women, but everybody knew they place. Civilians knew they place. You know, if it was a female, she was a civilian. She knew her place. You know, um, and today I just kind of that's one of the things that I look at. And 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 because you got, I'm just saying, tender dick Negroes out there, it's it's going to be hard to kind of nip that in the bud and bring the old ways back. And a lot of times, before old school people adjust to new school. They just retire out and sit down, you know, and that's yeah. unfortunate because the old school got so much say so. And brother, if you don't want to do right, I used to hear about people getting banned. I think one of my homies got banned years ago, and he won't tell us because he won't bring a hog back on the set. He won't, <laughs> he won't even come out on the set, you know what I'm saying? So I think he got banned, you know. Um, but you don't even hear about that anymore too often, you know, or saying, "Hey, this person is is got a black eye in the game; they can't be here," you know. And I think that when we allow so many <clears throat> clubs to blossom and no one's to oversee them, I don't mean control and I don't mean dictate, but just kind of pull them in like ambassadors. 
and teach those brothers who are now presidents because there's 15 of their homies who got bikes right. how to president, how the presidency is supposed to go. I just think that I, I would love that structure to be back, you know. We had something, that, uh, a system that they were going to implement, but it never came into place. And that's when uh, Nick was our president. And the council uh, came to us, and the Brotherhood, was the Stu said, no, said, the set is getting out of hand. It's getting too many clubs popping up. We need to govern this. And they wanted us to say, okay, well, we might need you guys' strength if it gets to it to that to get the point across mm -hmm. and uh, the president at the time Nick said we don't care what the little clubs do or what they think about doing this is us we gonna do us we, we gonna hold we gonna do our thing and take care of us we ain't gonna be bothered with what they got coming in. and had he not had that <laughs> frame of mind mm -hmm. it would have it would have It would have stopped a lot of this bombarding of a bunch of clubs. Because yeah. he, he was talking, they was talking about either, you know, if you come to one, one of you to start a club, you know, either join a club that's already existing, right, mm -hmm. or bring enough people to show that you were structural, structured enough to have a club and be right. on the set. And uh, anyhow, we got shot out. I, I was at that meeting. I was there years ago. And, uh, they wanted us to govern the people, the clubs that would start. Right. And they said, hell with that. We, we, at that time, we was the, the huge and, right. you know, we, 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 he said, well, man, we don't need to worry about that. But had he did that, it would have cooked me. Yeah. Probably would have had all of this extra. extra yeah. Yeah. So they, the other guys would have probably been in another club, so we, they would have came in with a better structure to where the set would be more, like you say, more camaraderized opposed yeah. to more right. that standoffish, you know. Yeah. Right. So you have a question. Uh, Mex said back then, how long would you put up not having a motorcycle, and what did y'all put up with when it came to prospecting? So how long would you put up with a person not having a motorcycle, and what did you have to put up with when it came to prospecting? Prospecting, okay. The prospecting was just to see that you would enough man to be part of this organization you was you would mix with us you know? and the time frame was up to the individual now you had to have a motorcycle when you came in and you had to be 21 years old the motorcycle had to be 750 and better mm -hmm. and you had to go to at that point when i was master we had seven chapters and you had to go around to all those chapters and get approved by them mm -hmm. before you come back and get a vote so the timetable that was on you but the bike you had to have and if your bike went down, it was I think it was 30 days. Uh, you get to you know, you know, get your bike back running mm -hmm. to, to stay active and keep from getting suspended. That was mm -hmm. okay. that's about what it is still to this day, Today, depending on who you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah. we kind of set that structure back then, and that was, it worked then. So I don't see no reason it should work. Right. To get on some uh, chosen few stuff, because I know a thousand people were going to ask and whatnot. How was the father when he was alive and he was one of the heads of the club? Did he rule with a heavy hand, a soft hand? S soft hand with big stick. Right. My father was a <laughs> massive man back in his day. You know, he, right. was a, he was chiseled out. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the kind of guy that you would want to think about trying. Right. Uh, but he was very calm, quiet, and collective person. Right. And he and he he portrayed himself like that and he and, and that's the way his delivery was. But when he delivered something, he didn't talk a lot about a lot of things, but when he delivered something, you know that that's what he wanted and that's the way he wanted it. And, you know, that, it was not up for negotiation. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Cause he was, this was, and still is in my opinion, his, his love. love. Always yeah. will be. Yeah, always. Been. That's why I tell like some people who come in. You know, when father was here, even in my time frame, you could bicker all day. As soon as he said something, it was a wrap. That's that. That's that. Very yeah. calm demeanor. Yeah, very. Yeah. I, I've never seen. I've never seen him in all the years that I've been in this organization. Man, upset. upset. 
it was just calm and smooth delivery. Belly man. Right. So you have another question from Mac. Mac. Mac got a lot of questions. Mac, yeah. you do know you can call in, right, brother? Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing too. Let's uh yeah, you can make the phone calls come at four two four two six two seven six five six. If you want people, you can uh, put them here for which ones? Any one of these? Any one of them. Okay. Yeah, call call in, Mecca All man. Right, just in case they call in. Plus, you should be able to hear yourself as well. Yeah. Testing. Okay. But again, uh, it's four two four two six two seven six five six. Because, Mecca, you keep sitting here texting on this TV, <laughs> brother. <laughs> My nigga. We not going for it. Um, I got another question from a brother that's actually in, I want to say, Ohio. In your era, how tight niche was the club compared to now? Well, it was a lot. It was tighter back then. A little smaller as well. That's true. So, right. Uh, uh, I, I imagine this. Hand, I knew what I had to deal with, with the seven chapters. So I could just imagine. Yeah, we ten times that. Yeah, all those yeah. hundred chapters. What it has to deal with. Uh, but that's why we have the, the annual main run, where everybody came. I don't care where, so we could come. Right. Get from, but more chapters. But it's hard to be as close knit as we was because it's just a just big, a big yeah. Just a big. Yeah. I, and I miss that. That's right. Um, let me see. I got some more uh, scenarios. I, I have one question. What? How did Chosen Few get started? Uh, that was the father. Uh, it was uh, Father Little Frank, uh, uh, Champ. You know, they, they, they started going up. They just started grouping together, and then they started going up north. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had the patch. Actually, our prospect patch was our riding patch. That was the original patch back okay. in the day. Right. And they went up north, started going up north, and, and they got the this name uh, heavy. In fact, he's got a birthday, 90th birthday coming up. Right there, from the soul brother. From the soul brother. Right. He said, okay, here come the boys with the bone in the back. <laughs> 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 And uh, instead of being the boy with the bone in the back, yeah, I go, he, he, he named the chosen few. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and another thing is, uh, you know, me being in the club, I was told that. You got a phone call, man. Okay, go ahead. We why is he? Go ahead, why, uh, Pizzle. We see you now. What's going on? Yeah, so I have a question for Pee Wee, OG Pee Wee, right now. Okay. And my my question to OG Pee Wee again. Good meeting. I met you, I believe, at the uh, Mother Chapter annual this past year. Okay. My president of Fontaine introduced me to you. Um, and my question to you is: with with Chosen Few being uh, a cornerstone, a, a lead club out there it, was there any pushback when with chosen few and trying to establish their self on the set uh no it was not when when i came when i drove up in the uh, 73 the few were already established as one of the larger clubs uh, and uh, because we were a mixed club we covered us other boundaries I say the valley was basically white. They could, uh, we went out there as well. Uh, San Gabriel was basically Hispanic, so we had uh, wherever they went, they went everywhere. San Gabriel came with them. <laughs> they, they, right. Yeah, they, they, and then and wherever they went, they would make they they'd have us go with them. So, yeah. but we were established back in the seventies uh, at that point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My last question I have is just a generalization question and my question is is for anyone that's wanting to join any club whether you're a 99 outlaw one percent or three percent whatever you want to join and do you feel or should i say it like this if someone wanted to come over and join chosen few should i say 
do you what is your opinion on them either being from another club and, and seeing how that lifestyle is, or do you feel that they should just come already from their first club into Chosen Few? Well, it, it would be good, better if they, this was their first club, because if not, wherever they come from, we got to check and make sure that they're leaving at good standards, because we don't want to take anybody else's problem or anybody else's headache or create a problem for ourselves. So, uh, if you thinking about joining, you never join a club, uh, that would, I would suggest make it to you first. But if you do bounce around, make sure whatever you, the organization you leave from, that you leave in decent standings. Got you, got you. Makes sense, makes sense. Thank you for the time, you guys. Good talking to you, Pee Wee. Oh, Good talking to you, Pee Wee. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Y'all have a great one. I'll keep watching in. So, with that question, I, I, I have a question. <laughs> Um, what's your thoughts on individuals? I know the, the, the motorcycle set is a set, but what's your thought on individuals going from club to club to club? Because there is, and I know sometimes you can go somewhere and it's not a fit for you. And then you go somewhere else and that's a better fit. But then you go somewhere else and then you go somewhere else. What's your thoughts on that? A person who kind of bounce around to multiple clubs. Yeah, well, in my administration, I didn't take it. Okay. Because it, it's got to be a, it seems like it's a problem there. And it seems like that's the problem. You can't settle in somewhere. You know, it's, it's okay to bounce to see where you fit in, but you, you need to make sure that that's where you want to go and where you want to be and ride it out. If you're bouncing around, mm, yeah. <laughs> right, and that's that's kind of you know um, because uh, as you mentioned, like someone coming from another club, you, they have to, to to you have to call that club, and you know a lot of these people are not even calling the clubs; they're just taking your word for it. Oh no, I left in good standings, and then that club sees this guy over. Now they got a call; he got a patch on his back now, and say, "Hey, this guy is not in good standings," and and, and I've had that happen personally. And he went back and told his club that I said the guy was a good standing. So then we had a debate about it. But I look up last week and I see the brother walk right into an association meeting. You know what I'm saying? And it's just kind of like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's baffling. It, it, it's it's really neat. He, they bouncing around. So I don't want to be that problem that he bounced to. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. But we had uh, back in the day with, with the Soul Brothers was we were very 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 close with them, and uh, then we would have members go from one to the other, and uh, it was a smooth transition with no problem because we were brother clubs. Right. We, in my heart, we still are, right. and because we, we would be together on most runs and and, and uh, so, so that happened in my era, but again. Really got to leave it and come in good standards. All right. Uh, I was going to ask. I remember you telling me a story back in the day about how you used to get majority of people back to the clubhouse. And you used to tell me that you guys would go in there, kind of start dancing with everyone, partying, <laughs> whatnot, woo, hit the bar, and then all of a sudden y'all would get up for one big crowd. And leave. They be like, well, "Where are you going? Oh, we going back to the clubhouse." And everybody would sit there and get up and follow y'all. Yeah. Call yeah. from Mecca Few. To accept, press one to send a voice. No, we don't accept you. Hang up on us. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you see me asking him a question? Dag nabbit. You know what I'm talking about? How we mute your black ass? <laughs> nah, go ahead. <laughs> What you, what you want me, what My guys, what's up, Pee Wee? What's happening, brother? <laughs> oh man, you know I'm just uh, elaborating real quick. Uh, okay, I feel. But if you look at the um, the messages, someone commented, made a comment about what I, the same thing I was about to ask you. Being that how big we are right now, and has this ever happened to you back then, where a brother, supposedly a brother. Same patches you're wearing, walk past you, doesn't acknowledge you, mm -hmm. and just keep on moving like as if you never existed. 
Uh, that's what we're talking about, the close-knit thing. It, it's, it's been got so large now that uh, we, we are knowing each other like we're supposed to know each other. But you, it, if you don't know a brother, you're supposed to make sure that you meet that brother. Uh, so when I'm walking past, I, I can't, I'm not with that. I understand that. Especially yeah. if you don't know that. This thing was a family. That's what Lionel started with as. It's a family. And Lionel went from yes. a club to a nation, but it started out as a family. And family is close. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to acknowledge your brother. If you greet him if you know him and meet him if you don't. So it's my take on that. Yeah, you would think that wasn't supposed to be the consensus, right. but once again, it starts from the top. Correct me if I'm wrong, because. I was always taught that you always go and greet your brother. Absolutely. Even if you don't know who that person is. And, and if you feel that he, he dissed you or he, for whatever reason, he's up to him on the side and approaching with him and, in a brotherly, f family fashion. And, uh, maybe he's having a bad day. Who knows? But, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, but I would certainly address it if you, if you feel like a brother just walked past. I, I do. Right. Uh, without blinking. Uh, I'm, I'm a social kind of guy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got a, a question from Leah Bottom. She says, if it was required to go around to each chapter to be approved, why is it so disconnected now? I see so many members with the same patch walk right past each other without speaking. I'm going to speak on that aspect, it, especially if you're speaking about us, per se, right? Like he said, back in the day, when I came in, you had to go to every chapter. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember we damn near had 30 runs a year, felt like, Man. you know what I mean? And you had to go to every chapter because if they didn't vouch for you verbally, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then it came to where they had a sign-off sheet and things like that. Um, third. Right now, it, that part's kind of gotten trumped because of how big we've grown. We have over 80 chapters, probably more than that at this step. At this step. That's a lot of goddamn running for one day <laughs> to yeah. go to all these chapters. So that's why it, at this point, sometimes it becomes a time frame, and you put it on the, the president, you know what I mean, to make sure that the prospect gets out and does the moving around and hustling and bustling he's supposed to do. So that's where it comes into. Now, they're not speaking to each other. I'm kind of on that just the same, especially if you ass new to this motherfucker. Say something to somebody. You know what I mean? Especially when it comes to OGs like Pee Wee or even of that age. You know what I mean? Right. If they got gray in their beard, go say something. I don't care right. if he just got here. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You, might, yeah. you might not know that he's an OG or new or whatever. Right. But, you know what I mean? Sometimes that, you know, kind of has to happen. Um, so that's what that's at, on my opinion. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Um, you was answering a question about uh, how we used to get the yeah, back yeah, to yeah, the, yeah. Tell Mecca fucking yeah. bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go ahead and hang Mecca, the phone up, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Mecca's good, brother. Ah, yeah, yeah, damn, you, brother. You, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pee Wee. Because in all actuality, uh, on, Mr. Becker, you supposed to be in this you. little chair over here. Uh, I, I know, but uh, I'll cup. be there next time. Buttercup. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave you alone right now. I'm going to let you have your moment. <laughs> I bet you are, buddy. <laughs> all right, bro. All, all right, Doug. All good. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, we did do that. We would hit the dough. That was a game plan. When we hit the dough, get the right on the dance floor, get the party on. Right. You know, let see what we how, we how we cut. Right. This is what you're going to get at our clubhouse. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. And then we would, uh, and then when we leave, the herd would come with us. Right. Uh, one thing, other thing I, mean, I want to interject this uh, about the close knitness thing. We used to, uh, one person would go to a, another person's house. Like, I'd ride to your house, right. pick you up, and then we'd ride to somebody else's house and pick them up. Right. And then we'd go to somebody else's house and pick them up. Next right. thing you know, we got a pack. And then we'd say, okay, well, we're going such and such, and we're going to do that. Right? Right. But it just started with one person going around, getting yeah. everybody's right. ride. And that was a good thing. That was that. You, you ride, you're close-knit, you know, you're, 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 you're brotherhood. Right. Uh, uh, well, 
I don't see much of that anymore. We still try and do it at the OGs, right? But that's 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 us. Um, and uh, when some of that came to mind, I was. Um, I lost train of thought that quick. <laughs> um, writing, writing. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Um, for the brothers, that's. Me, we're all over the country now, right. and instead of you can't go to all the chapters now. It's just impossible. Right. But the chapters in your region, right? You ought to. That's that policy still ought to exist. Right. Going to them, I, I don't know if it is or not, but uh, I hope it does. So right. Go to the ones that that's in your area, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. then the, the annual everybody needs to come to, to for sure. Chapter. For sure. Yeah. So now we get the big ball of wax and let them, let them see how we do it. Right, right, right. Once a year. That's right. Uh, I just lost my little train of thought because I was going to ask you something else. What you feel about presidents who don't ride their motorcycle? Active presidents. I ain't talking about retired. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm not talking about just our club. I'm talking yeah. about in general. This, this, is, this is the whole purpose of this thing. You, you lead by example. Yeah. This been, is a motorcycle organization. How the hell are you going to be a motorcycle leader and hold you that, ride? Yeah, hold that thought real quick. Mecca, I heard you. I hope you heard that comment. Lead by example. Because <laughs> I'm on this nigga here when it comes to that. He goes, ooh, president. Lead by example, my guy. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. But yeah, but go ahead, Pee Wee. <laughs> I said he's supposed to be on the on the ground pounding. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's just a valid reason that he can't. That's what this thing is about. Motorcycle. Right. Yeah. Um, you have a question from uh, <laughs> him there from Sac uh, Fresno Full Throttle. He says, "Question is is more business investment." My question is more business investment. Why don't the club? reach out with other organizations and black groups to move the economy status around the United States? Ooh, that's a loaded question. Man, ain't it? The first thing come to my mind is... Crabs in a barrel. Yeah, but only if you made it 100% legal, you LLC it, corporate it, whatever it is, they will find a way to make it illegal make it look like organized okay, crime. Re, uh, yeah, I mean, even if you do that because of... Repeat the question again. The question is, why don't the club reach out with other organizations and black groups to move the economy status around the United States? See yeah, that? yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 if, it, if it started out that way, I could see them shutting it down more because it's more like it's the Black Panthers type thing. Not Black Panthers per se because it's all ethnicities in it. But this is organized crime. Not saying it can't be done. This is just my opinion. Right. Not saying it can't be done, but I can see them making it out to be as if it's a crime. That's it. Because we are already criminalized in the first place. Exactly. It, yeah, you're already criminalized by putting that vest on. So they'll find a loophole to knock it down somehow. Yeah. You can't make it. I mean, for that type of, it, it couldn't be a public move. Right. You know what I mean? It would have to be some type of underground scenario. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say your <laughs> thoughts, be <laughs> yeah, they, they attack us from all kind of angles, but right. that one. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, yeah, we, I, we we did do things like in our community back uh, at, uh, like toy drives and mm -hmm. food drives. In fact, that's what kept us with the community when we was on 108th and, and, and Broadway. Uh, the community was with us because you know we we'd be there for those that that needed. Right. So we didn't have much issues, and I think uh, that kind of drifted away, and uh, the community kind of turned it back on us. And that's how we end up having yeah. changed locations from over there. Yeah, but it's cool to stay connected to the community. Yeah, and that was you know, the best we can. And that was actually going to be my next question: How important you feel is community service to the bike scene and the community? Absolutely, it's very important. Let us see again that we have more than one gear. We're, we're not just we're people about people who ride motorcycles, but we're also concerned about our fellow man, our community, and everything. 
and our environment. So we need to let, let that be seen and do something to, to make a difference. You have a question uh, from Joe Collins. Any questions on the origin of the halfway run? That was uh, Unknown Riders who sponsored that run uh, when I drove up. That was, that one, I think it was by one of the only clubs that was up there. It was to accept, was a press more clubs one. Up to there, send a voicemail, uh, press two. It was the, it was the uh, Unknown Riders function. Now, how it originated? Right. Uh, Bernard. I, I, I'm not sure. Hold on, Bernard. Hold on. But the, oh, per- all right. but the purpose was for uh, for the guys from up north and the guys from down south to be in such a location again, okay. camaraderizing okay. with each other. Yeah. That was the pretense of it. Okay, you have Brother Bernard on the line. Bernard, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing, Dr. Phil? I'm good, brother. How you doing? All right. Yeah, I was just catching the show. I'll just listen to you guys. I don't know how long y'all been on. Yeah, I wrote that question about uh, the uh, organization and grouping up with people, you know, because, uh, you know, what's going on in the United States these days, I think that's, you know, basically our problem now. We got a lot of things going on, you know, around across the United States from entertainment, uh, but not no serious business. You know, as I look at other groups uh, that come to the United States from different countries, they always seem to get into the economic and build a foundation. And I was just wondering, you know, with the bikers group and, you know, political groups and et cetera, why don't we have a conversation with all groups and figure out how we could establish more uh, stability in the United States, you know? Because, uh, you know, mostly things, I, I, I hear what y'all guys saying, when we start something, they always find a way to try to tear it down. But if we look at it more, if we get our more economic independence, we won't have to rely on, you know, groups trying to lead us and give us what, what they think we should have. So that basically was my question. I'm just wondering why we don't give it serious thought. Other than this, you know, I listen to the brothers as they respond. It's almost like um, don't really want to get involved with that, you know. So I, you know, I just want to see if you you guys want to speak about that a little bit more, and I'm gonna hang up and listen. Sound good? Oh, for sure. Um, I, I, to me, I don't think it's necessarily so much as not wanting to get involved. Um, like I right. said before, sometimes I think it's a crab in a barrel type scenario. And in the biking community, like I had asked my OG, what was the difference between back then and now? Back then, it was a yeah. lot more camaraderie. Now, sometimes we get into these functions and it's kind of standoffish. It's not so much as everyone wanting to function together, not party together. Some people don't even want to reach out and shake another brother's hand. So if I don't want to shake hands with you, at what point do I want to put my money with yours? You see what I'm saying? So that's all I'm getting at. At some point, we got to break that cycle, and then we can get to that part. If yeah, that makes I, under, any sense. I understand. Right. right, I understand exactly what you're saying, but I think we need to shake off that stereotype. No, no, I, I don't I, think I, that's I do actually. Yeah, yeah, I don't I do think too. that's actually what's going on today. Mm-hmm. I think it, we 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 kind of walk around where we we kind of want to, you know, do it on your own attitude. Right. And I think that we need to get into a serious discussion, not with just the bikers, you know, political and all that stuff. Right. And start seriously start thinking about, you know, getting a hold of our community, you know, with the with the police abuse and stuff like that. I think we as as we stay separate, we are more vulnerable and we lose ground economically. Oh, okay. So I think we we're, we're going into this global phase where we're still lacking um, contribution to the world, right? You know, right. but I think we have enough people, enough intelligent people to sit down now and discuss what's really going on. And I think 
all of that stigma and all this uh, stuff that's going on across the country, not just in the United States, but we, we can look at it a little bit more and be a lot more organized. Right. So, again, I'm, I, you know, I just hope y'all would touch on that some right. and kind of open it up, you know, and maybe try to get some dialogue going as you guys ride, uh, you know, things going on around the country that maybe y'all should implement that in y'all rides and people y'all discuss things with. Oh, that, with that, that, can, yeah, that can always happen. Right. Yeah. 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 But, it, you know, sometimes that comes with stages. You got to start with the heads of these organizations. Right. You know what right. I mean? Not, not so much the, not so much the bottom per se, but I hear you, but that's a whole nother conversation. And, yeah, yeah. That's a monumental task. Right. right. Yeah, I agree. And, and just to let you know, at, nice at, start there, my brother. Yeah. yeah as, as a businessman, um, Every club that I've encountered has people in the club that are business owners. You know what I'm saying? And um, and, and I get what you're saying, but here's the challenge. You know, if you look up what is a gang member, and you're going to say, what do they got to do with bikes? I'm going to explain it to you. Three or more, okay. three or more that comes together and agree to do something negative. They consider that a gang. Right. So... Right. If you get all, all these biker clubs give out toys and turkeys and everything all year long. Some of them do it for 15, 20 years before they even recognized, right? So now imagine all of us coming together, right? So you got ex gang members, you got ex drug dealers, you got people with nine to five, you got people that just fix on bikes just to make money to rock, be able to ride, right? Now we all come right. together. And because we're together, the powers that be is going to look at us and say, Look at them N-I-G-G-A's. They yeah. coming together. They, they No, we got to shut them down. Them bikers is all around the world. Not a city or state you can go to and it's not a motorcycle club. We got to shut them down. Right. They, they, we, they can't do nothing positive. They criminals. They ain't no good. You see what I'm saying? They're not saying what you're saying is not valid. It is. Very but the valid. other side right. of it is, yeah. even I was riding with a pair of brass knuckles and the police officer said, man, you know I can take you to jail for that. That's a felony. He said, but if you got a gun on you, it's a misdemeanor. <laughs> so they pick and choose what they want to do. And, and what you're saying is great. Now, we get selective people from different groups to do that. I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I would be love to be on board. But we all have to get, a, like he said, get out of the crabs in the bucket because some people always want to be a leader and don't understand that in order to be a great leader, you got to be one of the best followers. So I, I, I agree yeah, with I, you, bro. I, I, I agree with you, and I think it takes a group, you know, not yeah. just one person. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. It always seems like someone wants to lead and, and you know, direct you in wrong directions all the time when it should be a group effort. And I'm not just, and again, I'm not just talking about bikers. You know, I, I have a lot of people on my page that does a lot of different things, you know, entertainment, speak, and stuff like that. But when I talk to them as an individual, like someone to call me for some help or something on an issue, and I say, well, well, call one of my buddies on my page, and it seems like they get a little, you know, step back. And I'm saying, see, that's what some of the problem is today, because I could see that same person in the street, or they could see that same person in the street and have a conversation, you know? And I think that stigma needs to be dropped among, you know, African-American people. And we need to get a more serious dialogue together because, you know, as things go on, we're, we're lacking more and more economically, and that's why we can't build. And I think some of it just mostly uh, directly impostering all the time. We know what we need to do, but we just need to start doing it. And, and like, like I said, uh, thanks for letting me call in. I was just listening to you guys, and I just found it interesting what you guys are talking about. And it's more geared to events, but the events is also pulling revenue also, but we, we don't own the buildings that we throw the events in. And that's what we need to focus upon, you know, ownership. Okay, y'all guys have a good night, and I'm going to hang up and listen to the rest of the program. All right. Well, Thank you, brother. Up, brother. Thanks for calling. Okay, I got a, a question from the brother, uh, Mr. Joe Collins. And I'm sure this is coming to you, PB. Uh, what's your recommendation on people who hold a position in an MC who do not fulfill their responsibilities? 
and he's got the top three position. He says especially the top three, but I'm gonna say any position. Impeachment. Yeah. Hmm. Period. If you're not doing the job, right? Out, out of office and replace him with somebody that's that's that's, that's capable of, of doing it. There it is. Yeah. That simple. And you know, I agree 100. <laughs> <laughs> percent But you know, some people, and I had the experience of, of observing this. They they rule through dictatorship, and the intimidation is is just so real. You know, they're afraid to even impeach a person. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of like the people in the United States who vote for the president. Mm -hmm. They don't really know the power they have, mm -hmm. so therefore they kind of accept anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're scared of the boogie man. Yeah, that's you know. that would really be happening because at the end of the day, the club runs whatever. It just right. doesn't matter. But when you come, like I'm a I'm a I'm a play devil's advocate sometimes when it comes to a dictatorship thing, right? <clears throat> Depending on the scenario. Sometimes the head nigga going to know a lot more than the body. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. to keep the body out of harm's way and certain shit, he might have to make a decision right. that's better for the club, even though the member might feel, oh, this nigga just dictating us. And we, we. Right, right. But again, it depends on the scenario. Now, if it's about money and things like that, yeah, that's a dictator. Nigga, you yeah. just want my pocket. You just want to dictate where my fucking money go. Right. You know what I mean? But sometimes, like, when it comes to certain aspects and whatnot, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. or movements in the club, sometimes it be like that because somebody okay. else might be laxed. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, oh, I'm, you know, let's say there's a function somewhere and the head individual is like, yeah, we're not going over there because we might have had issues. One right. of the members, he might have been there a thousand times. Oh, nigga, it's nothing, nigga. I'm going where I want to go, and you just so lax because you don't look at the bigger picture. Right. You're right. looking at yourself because you've been cool. Right. What about these other thirty niggas? Right, they wasn't right. cool over there. Right, right. So, I mean, so that's my thing when it comes to that part of the game. Like, yeah. sometimes it needs it, sometimes it don't. Yeah. Right, depends on the situation. Yeah. Right, this is a, 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 a democratic uh, society. You put pe key people in key places right. to take care of the business. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you have a question from Leah Bottoms. I feel, well, maybe it's a statement slash question. I feel, and it's just me, but if you choose to be a part of a club, you should be embracing your brothers and sisters from all over. Not saying you will get along or be best friends, but it's respect. It's respect thing. And it makes other clubs see that you're... She wrote a little novel here. <laughs> uh, let's get this thing up. Oh man, I'm trying to get to the. Uh, I can't even get to the bottom of her question, but um, I, in my my opinion on that is I, I 100% agree. Um, um, I I think as me coming in, uh, and it also depends on the the prospect's mentor and who's over that prospect as to how he or she will go out because I came in my mentor he introduced me to so many people I'm like bro I can't even remember all these names. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to remember my name is Prospect. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when I went back out and I saw some of those same people, now I'm passed in, I introduced myself. You know? Right, and right. even to this day, I'll go places and still introduce myself. You know? Because for me, even though I'm a president, being a member is more important than being a president to me. Because I got to represent as a member more importantly than anything. Now, as a president, behind the scenes with everybody I'm dealing with, yeah, we got to have some structure. But some people forget that they are a member when they help hold a position. <laughs> you know, and, and, and just for me, keeping myself humble was like, see Fontaine, okay, he looked like he mad today. I, I'm not going to say nothing. Catch him another time. Hey, bro, how you doing, bro? All right, now I'm Dr. Phil, man. Oh, man, I'm Fontaine. You know, okay, nice to meet you. And uh, you may have to do that two or three times. Because there's so many people on the set, right? That you, how am I gonna remember your really name? Know them. Right, yeah. you and know I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm speaking on myself. Like I'm getting it a, a lot of times when people say, "Oh, you so unapproachable and whatnot." Actually, I'm not. I'm just quiet. I got a certain look on my face that I've had since I was probably five years old. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna change. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
zone. And I'll just be in my own zone. So unless we have a problem, it's just I'm cool with almost everybody. Yeah, um, speaking of on um, close to that topic is this is what I wish that, that would happen on this set. Uh, instead of wearing the feels on your shoulder, people need to be more understanding of fellow bike and other people and, and not want to go hard in the paint if there's some kind of situation may occur because all situations don't have to go there right. you know mm -hmm. and, I, and, and it seems to me that that's why people are all on, on, on tense because folks are not willing to be in it's never should break but you'd be willing to be in if you run into a situation where you know well maybe 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 i'm a little hard let me take lean back and take another look at it as opposed to being aggressive with it and yeah. going at it. Right. We, 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 we would stop a lot of the confrontation that's on the set. And that's not, that don't need to be. We don't need to have all the confrontations. This thing is supposed to be, like I said, it's a bike, it's a social thing. We're supposed to be having fun. Right. Bikes. So, loosen, uh, uh, loosen your attitude sometime if you run into something. Assess it a little bit more before you go hard in the pain. Maybe we stop some of this physical stuff that goes on. Right. Yeah, Fontaine said that a month ago. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, which goes I totally concurred in. Yeah, like I told you, I told yeah. you he was one of my yeah. teachers. That's where yeah. I learned it from. Um, and with that comment, uh, Leah Bottom said, "Why can't all the presidents meet and talk about the change that needs to happen? Then the presidents can start implementing it." Um, I, and actually, go, no, go ahead. Yeah, I don't yeah, have an answer for okay. that. Okay, well, I'm, because I, when she put it on there, I kind of responded. Okay. And I'm not trying to knock nobody's program. I'm not trying to knock your club, how you run shit, no, none of that. All I'm saying is there is a group, and there are groups that do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They have their talks. They do all that. But at the end of the talk, it's up to the president, to, to take back. it back to your body, mm -hmm. and to have them implement it, not just in words and whatever, but in action. If right. you don't do it, you take it back with a I don't give a fuck attitude, your members will too. Yep. You know Absolutely. what I mean? And when they do it, the next president going to be like, well, they don't give a fuck. Why should I give a fuck? <laughs> My members right. don't give a fuck. Yeah. Now we all in this don't give a fuck attitude. Yep. That's why the conversations go in circles and they go nowhere. Nothing you get accomplished. Right, you get up in there beating your chest and whatnot, and it all sounds great until you get home and you just smoke the blunt and have a drink, mm -hmm. and all that shit goes out the window. So that's the scenario. If everybody who comes in these groups and organizations, whether it don't matter the association that you're part of, organization, association, alliance, don't matter. Right. If we all in here, everyone got to be on the same page. You know what I mean? Not just the heads but the members as well right and if the majority of the members aren't on the same page maybe you got to shake camp with the ones that's not you know right. what i mean so yeah. we can get the bigger picture there you go. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. uh she said oh Joe was joe yeah joe collins was responding and and and, and to go into that i'm a part of the association uh, uh, Leah, and uh, that is one of the things the chair and co-chair always talk about is for presidents to take it back to their clubs. Um, for me, uh, when you say something, just even at our last meeting, there was a lot of things said that I liked and I agreed with, and, and I went back to the club. You know, uh, We don't have to vote on are we doing a toy run with them this year. It's mandatory. We do it every year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. That's not up for discussion. This is what we're doing. You know what I mean? You don't have right. a choice, and if you don't show up, it's a fine. Right. You know, um, I think a lot of people rather have members than structure. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to give nobody a fine because I got my members. I, I, me and my sergeant armor show up, but my members won't show up. You know, and, and that is on that leader of that particular group. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, even in my group, listen, this is what we're doing. We got the, 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 the toy drive. We got Thanksgiving. We're there. All members need to be accounted for. All right, prayers, I got you. Right. Now, if you got a valid reason, understandable. But it's not, uh, we need to come in, we need to vote on if we're going to do the, uh, why are you even the president? <laughs> this was happening before you came. Right. So don't let them slip on it because they will. And then it will trink over into, oh, we got a mandatory run. 
Oh, Prez, you know, uh, I had an argument with my girl last night. Well, good. Win therapy, bro. Let's go. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know, so, yeah, Lee, I just, I agree. I think it's up to the presidents, you know, and, and sometimes that president be be an asshole. And, and, and when you have structure, a lot of times people will view you as that. But this is what's best for the club. Right. Right. What's it? One thing you said earlier is that if uh, you said Nick, right? President Nick? Nick, yeah. He was, he was, okay. Uh, president when I was vice in LA. Okay, so you saying if had he said yay to this association, you think it would have been more structure to it, correct? At this I point? believe so. Oh, I do too. I'm, I'm gonna keep it one thousand. I'm gonna uh, keep it one thousand. In fact, I was I was on board with doing it, but he he wasn't, and you know, you know, the thing with. with the leadership in my administration, you know, if, he's, if you're not on board with it, don't buck it in front of the, mm-hmm. the membership. Now, me and the players, back when we have our, our say, our little go rounds after the fact. Right. But they couldn't play us in the middle. Right. Um, that was how I kept our leadership strong back then. But yeah, it certainly would have been a lot of, uh, it would have been a lot more orderly and a lot less small clubs fighting for dates and whatnot. Right. Uh, they could get the data uh, and it just wouldn't have been it's just too many so many clubs and it's just it's just disarray, you man. It, it ain't enough dates for people. Right. You know? and, uh, and it's it just got chaotic. And that's yeah. how sight is twenty twenty, you know. That, that right. happened. And you know it's it it's, it goes back to something Bernard was saying about business. You know, you you have fifty two weeks in a year. Mm-hmm. You have one hundred twenty seven clubs. Bah. You know, so this is just me and Black Sam was talking about this. Why don't this is your date and this is your day instead of you doing something way over there and you doing something way over there and you splitting the whole motorcycle setup? Let's just do it together and whatever the party is, we split it fifty fifty. Okay. Crabs in a barrel. <laughs> It's, you I know, can't, I can't say it to me. No, you, you, you yeah. can't, but I'm just, it's, mean, it's just when you have good minded leaders, mm-hmm. it's simple. Very. It's simple. Look, we're going to do this together. We're going right. to win the biggest place. We're going to turn this joint. Because when you do it together, guess what? Right. That pot, that well, bar. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why, even <sighs> like Pee Wee said, in the past decade, shit has changed. I say it all the time, and I've been yes. here right. for the past decade, and right. shit has changed. Give it 10, 15 years ago. You probably could have done that. Yeah. For a few clubs. Yeah. Put them together. Today. Mm-hmm. That would have been the thing to do. Yeah. Now, yeah. Right. Today it's so burnt out. Like it's, I don't want to say it's so burnt out and, and, and to where it's false hope where it can't happen. I'm just saying at this stage, it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of the concept. Uh, so. Uh, Mecca asks, he said, impeachment. Can you let our audience know what and how to make that happen because that's a big word to many peewee the club is ran by the majority if, the, if the officers not doing the job and the majority of the club see that he's not doing the job we get the majority of the vote he's out of there let's put that piece with him. that's simple the majority of the vote don't have to be a hundred percent at least it was back then but that's just the majority, and it's obvious. If somebody's not doing the job, you know you're not doing the job. You get them out of there. The, the, the people, the membership, see that they should see that. Uh, get the majority out there. How do you go and in with somebody that's going to be uh, more efficient with, the, with that position? Yeah. Before the association, I want to ask you something. Somebody told me, and actually, I see, I have a picture somewhere uh, where it's dangerous, John. It's got, uh, I can't think of his name right now. It's got a lot of OGs in it. It's got Pee Wee from the DOs, D-O's in it. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's got, uh, man, Payback from the Deuces. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and old, at that, old, old school. Yeah, it's old. <laughs> yeah, it's old. Oh, old. And, um, <laughs> and at one point, I guess the organization was supposed to be called Outlaw Motorcycle Association, but majority of the clubs didn't want to be considered outlaw. So that's why they changed it to the association. Association, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, they they wanted to be. That's how they termed us the, on the bikes and outlaws. But in society, with police, we've been at outlaws and, and one percenters. Correct. 
from day one. From day one. Um, um, yeah, this, the, the, I think it was the association um, back then. They, they wanted, in order to be part of the association, they wanted you to give your name, full name. Right, I and, remember uh, all that. Yeah, you remember all that. And we weren't going to do that. Right. Name, phone number. Um, so that turned it to be outlaw in the, in the, the bikes that came in. Those that would do it, if you want to do it, I mean, I should get another name. Right, right, know, right. And I, and my, not, not my play. Talk right. about mine, not somebody else's, but it was a few other groups that didn't want to be bothered with that. And that's how we got deemed outlaw on the set. I got you. But society and police, we've been that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And that's why I say, like, I wanted to speak on that because that's what the father references on the video, on, on, on the Take None Given a documentary about being outlawed or, or not. And he was talking about the set aspect, about yeah. not with the with the name and the right. phone that's numbers. The emanation of that. Right. Right. That's right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, brother. Kiran, uh, he said, so if a club loses the majority of its members and don't have enough for a full board, do they get shut down or do you let them still stand? I, uh, real quick, I'm going to answer that. You tell Kiran he need to play every position. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, about, brother? You got to play. Yeah, I don't care who you lose, nigga. Roll Captain Prospect. You play both positions. No, I'm playing. Yeah. Go ahead, people. <laughs> <laughs> you're, supposed, you're supposed to have at least seven members to, to have a chapter. Because that's covering all the officers. Right. The basic, the basic officers. And if you fall below that, uh, try to build. Build your, uh, your, 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 your chapter back up. But if you can't and you see it's not working, you know, uh, we, we have to go to another chapter. Yeah. You don't have to fold, turn it Apache and all that. Just go to another chapter. But if it's a small club and you ain't got enough to exist, why fight? Why try? You know, right. It ain't, it, right. It ain't right. working. Don't force it to work. Right. Join somebody else. If you can't build. So there's this thing that I've heard for years, a few years that I've been out here. Oh, if you grandfather then you only need five members. Not so. Y'all hear that? No, Not I so. Not so, y'all. So it's seven. Well, not so. <laughs> now, I'm going I'm to I'm speak on that one aspect. Now, depending, if you're already an established club and you're planting a flag in a new area, okay, they might get away with five okay. for a little while. Okay. You know what I mean? But yeah. you have to build on that five. Right. That five is just your little foundation. That's before you even so much as really get a president, patches, and anything else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. On that aspect, yeah. you planting the flag, but before you actually get to set the bonfire and throw a party and all stuff, you better have your full cabinet. So would it would it be appropriate to say, for example, let's say uh, John Sam is starting John Sam's Club in Los Angeles, and they got five people. So instead of coming with John Sam Los Angeles, you still should be rocking the patch that you came from until you get your cabinet, or is it okay? To create a whole new patch for that particular city. Wait, but you saying one dude starting his own new? No, no. Club? Say, say he coming from another club. Okay. And they're coming to Los Angeles. Okay. So they have five good members for sure. Should they still be rocking the other city until they establish their okay. seven? Yeah, and in all actuality, it shouldn't be nobody wearing nothing but the one individual who came from okay. out of town. Okay. The other ones need to be either in club like colors like so if their colors, colors is black yeah. and gray you need to be wearing black and gray okay that type of aspect until you get your numbers and aspects right you okay know what i'm saying okay now if you get your five with that one dude it's still a time frame it right. don't mean just because you're a seasoned member that you get to stay here and run around with five niggas right that's not what okay. that means yeah okay that makes sense i know a club that got one member but because they've been around forever you know <laughs> <laughs> I 
Yeah, yeah, we like like we we said we ain't gonna put no names out nope, there. Nope, no names. I got an idea who you're talking about. Yeah, but you can let me know when the when the power gets cut. <laughs> you know what I'm Man, okay. Yeah, you let me know when the power go off. Uh, let me see what else we got on here. I got uh, a question. Oh, 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 go oh, ahead. I'm go just going to say, uh, Scooter Bucket said, I haven't seen Pee Wee in years. Hello, I'm Chicken George's daughter. Oh, hey, how you doing, sweetie? <laughs> <laughs> I got a question um, from Mr. Black Jackson. I'm going to try to squeeze it down uh, and not be so uh, personal, I would say. Um, but he's noticed there's a gap between... Uh, the older generation and the newer generation of bikers. Um, what kind of advice would you give the newer generation to bridge the gap and bring the younger closer with the older? To spend time with them. Uh, that's key. Uh, the older biker is the carrier of test and proven experience because he's been out there and he's been doing it for so long. So, you know, sponge up on that. Right. And the reason he's been around so long is he's got to know something. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, uh, right. Oh, oh, Joe Collins keep popping up some good I ones. I see. I see. I'm finna, I'm finna get <laughs> in here, ahead. too. Yeah. Uh, we got a, oh, somebody didn't jack me yet, boss. Hold on. Hold on. I didn't, I didn't got the boot. I done got the boot, I mean. Okay, he says, um, what do you think about 99% clubs like regular MCs that try or that adopt, you know, outlaw or 1% motorcycle ways? And, you know what I mean? Like the traditions. Um, what do you feel about that? Trying to portray. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, basically. Taking, you know what I mean, outlaw ways and portraying it in their 99% club. How you feel about that? In the 99% club. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, either you want to be or you don't want to be. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, either you fit the bill or you don't, you know. How they say it, stay in the lane? Right. Yeah. 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 If stuff doesn't fit for you, you ain't cut out for that, uh, stay where you at. Right. So let me revise that, because I'm a 99%, but I love the out, outlaw ways or the 1% of ways. Mm. I love the structure of it, right? Okay. Uh, a one percenter club seen me in another state by myself. They've seen me travel. And they say, hey, take this pen. We see you everywhere, okay? I'm not trying to portray a one percenter. Um, Go ahead. Okay, I'm... That's different. Okay. Okay, and I think what he's talking about is different. When you get those passing pins, you get it from the dominant club to pass to a certain area, correct? Right, yes. Okay. What he's saying is, why are 99% doing that? Why oh. are they trying to give pins and oh, walk wow. around with the pins on and putting oh. Nomad on there? You know what I mean? And they may have two chapters, one in L.A., one in the grapevine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you got a nomad. They don't have yeah. the manpower or the juice. Yeah. That, that's it. And, and, that's, and, and yeah. because I, when I asked about nomads, what was it about? And it was like, my bro was like, no, we don't, we don't do that. That's, that's the 1% of the outlaws. Like, mm -hmm. you, we're not going to send you nowhere to fix anything. Right. Maybe they don't know what it's for. And it sounds cool because when I first heard of nomads, I was like, oh, you get to go everywhere? Everywhere? God damn. But as I begin to talk to people and they begin to tell me what it was about, I was like, oh, damn, you, you got a lot of work to do. You know what I mean? So, and maybe I would say it's the lack of education. It is. You know, because, I, yeah, I, I'm not, yeah, I, you know, whether I get a safety pin or not, I'm a ride. And, and that's the thing. Some people in, in this stage in the game, like, I think over the years, that position has transitioned, right, mm -hmm. as to what, they used to think it was no matter where I just I'm sleeping under trees and bushes. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Rolling to what it is now. The highway. Right. 
you know I mean? So I think some of them feel like because I ride far, I get to put this on. And that's not the way the game goes. Not in this stage. Mm -hmm. Not in this generation of biking. Mm -hmm. Someone in another club, whether it's a dominant, diamond, or whatever, we see it. We're going to think something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they need to understand what it's for. Don't Because I've seen, hate to say it, I've seen women with a nomad rocker on. Wow. Okay? Wow. And it, okay? And, and I don't, whether she wears wow. it now anymore or not, I don't know. I saw it in the picture, though with a mm -hmm. club that's here in LA. And my thing is like, you don't even know what you're getting into. Right. You know, especially when you got a full face on and whatnot and somebody, let's just say they got a problem with your club. Let's say they don't, they ain't gonna wait for you to raise that shield. Right. So. Right. Wow. The things people do. Man. Shit. The games so, people so, play, so, <laughs> so, I don't know what club you from, Joe. But if that happens, generally, Joe's club is a cream puff club. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about my man. But, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm playing. So, <laughs> I'm, playing. so I'm, I'm just playing. thinking, like, because going back to what he said, that, which is a really good question, because I feel like this: a lot of these ninety-nine percent clubs has no structure whatsoever. And 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 who's better to model than a dominant or one percent of that right. is within your area? Um, not try to beat them, but the structure, mm -hmm. you know. Because I think if we all operate on one accord, we wouldn't have somebody wearing a nomad that's not even supposed to wear a nomad. Right. We wouldn't have presidents that got because they got a chapter in Vegas and they got a chapter in Arizona. They got national on their stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm told you should be in multiple places, not just, you know. But I think it's a lot of lack of education. That was one of the reasons why I was like, man, I'll be on there if you're going to educate me because I want to know. Yeah, but this, that's true. I don't, just don't know what, the, what it means, what it stands for, and what, what they're getting into. Right. Uh, let me uh, say a disclaimer real quick <laughs> to Mr. <laughs> Collins. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump me when uh, <laughs> don't jump me when you see me. Uh, but yeah, so um, let me see. I had some more questions real quick before we uh, kind of get on this tangent because we've been here for a minute. I'm sure. I know we only got an hour. Are we over that already? I already know. That's why I'm looking at the time frame. Like, oh, shit. 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 But see, that's what happened when you, when I get to learning stuff. Like, even that question, just, just hearing that, because a lot of them is what I was thinking. Right. You know, and no offense to any of my club members, but sometimes one of your club members, because they've been dormant so long, they don't really remember. Right. I think in order to stay sharp, you got to stay active. Right. And Absolutely. so, to, to just hear stuff and then hear the questions, because... I mean, I ain't did like Mech and put nobody bike on flat. You know, I look forward to that, right. though. You know, like, man. <laughs> he said, I look forward to popping a tire or two. You know, but I just, I, personally, I feel like this. Black Sam and I was talking. He's the Sergeant of Arms of the Association. Right, right, right. And um, he was observing, right. you know, and as the meet was going on, you know, I was putting my head down, I'm looking up, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and he like, you know, let other words... I need to see so right. then I can know how to structure, you know. Right. Um, I think that some people be in position too long. Right. And they get too relaxed. And, and, and that's why I said the dictatorship comes in. You know, nobody wants to be president. Nobody wants to take on the responsibility. Right. But you're risking losing your chapter. Right. Because you can only be destroyed from the inside. You can't be destroyed from the outside. Right. And so I just think that for the 99% of clubs. I, I just think that you need to talk to OGs and, and one percenters who know so you can learn. Right. Even if you just take that and kind of adapt a little bit to fit your club, it right. gives you a better structure than running around here wild because a bunch of y'all got a little bit of change and y'all went and bought New Harleys. <laughs> right. To me, just because you have a Harley don't mean you a ground pounder. don't mean you a real MC. Right. You know, when you getting out there and you hitting functions after functions after functions and people call and say, hey, man, 
Who is this guy? He we see him everywhere. He you know. Right. Now people recognize you without even introducing yourself. Right. To me, those are people who are ground pounders. You know, and when we was talking about when you started and how I always because when I met Doc on a few, um, he saw my name. He said, "You know what that means?" I said, "Absolutely." I said, "I get ready when the wind blow." He <laughs> said, "Good." I said, "Bro, you ain't gonna never hear that Doctor Feel Good." coming behind you failed I know what it mean <laughs> and we begin to converse mm -hmm. because that was his name long before I came mm -hmm. so now that's I why when I not to cut you off when you said <laughs> you, I didn't even say that I said okay yeah now, now when I have somebody <laughs> to look up to because I, you know I grew up re respecting those that came before me no matter where you were mm -hmm. and when I see them I always ask questions right. that's why when I hear somebody say man we getting too old well Doc from the few is in his 70s man he's still pounding man like explain it to me right you know, I'm look. That's why I joined Chosen Few because my last club, love them dearly. They didn't really go too far, right? <laughs> and when I joined, everyone was like, everyone was always saying Chosen Few rode too hard and they rode too far. That was the concept. So I'm like, man, we gonna see. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> First run I went on, we went to Arizona. We met at the clubhouse. And got on the 110 going north to the 10, right? Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's a grip of us, it. about a hundred of us, okay? Mm -hmm. Only reason I knew my bike was on is because it was still running. I couldn't hear it, though. Right. We get into a light, I'm, I'm like literally putting my head down, hitting the <laughs> gas. <laughs> Only reason I know it's on because it's vibrating. Yeah. That's how loud it is. And we take it off at like, what, four or five in the morning? I don't think we slowed down until we got to Pomona. Right, okay. Yeah, and, and probably past Pomona. Mm -hmm. Easily doing a hundred and something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you was it. You yeah, like it, was, yeah, it was after <laughs> that. After and that. I remember one time Watusi tried to get mad at me. He told me I was, t I was too hard on people. One time, I forgot where we were going. We ended up taking a 105 and coming to, on the thing. And he right next to me. We stomping. We get to where we going. Watusi look at me. He said, "Man, you hard on them boys." I said, "Hard." I said, "Look who's talking." <laughs> the Ooh, guy right next to me. Oh my God! It, we next. We behind the police. He doing little burnouts. I said, "The police right there." Yeah, I know. It's best time to do it. Oh, <laughs> that's my Tuesday. I yeah, call, I call it Big Tosh. Yeah, he's like, "It's best time to do it." Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so you, you had some conversation with my bestest buddy, the doctor. Hey man, I, I appreciate him because yeah, he's a child brother, man. He saw that name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can see him doing that. You know, I'm like, right. what's going on, man? Because right. he'll just say doc. You know, he, you know what that mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doc, I likes to fuck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He like, okay. I said, man, trust me. I, I promise you, everyone gonna certify it. You know, <laughs> he's like, all right. And we had a conversation, you know, and, and again, for me, I'm always a student. Okay. I'm never, I'm never the, the professor. I might be the professor's aide, but I'm a student because I want to learn and I'm a stickler for rules. I like rules, you know, and it, 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 it just keeps me structured and rooted. Structured, and a, a lot of times when people don't have those rules, you know, all the good stuff go out the window. So, I got a couple questions. Like I said, I, sometimes I try to break them down so that they don't seem so open. Um, you know how the rule is about passing one percenters on the freeway and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you say to the individuals that say, you can't tell me what to do, I'm going to pass anyway? Pass at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that right. could be devastating. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Implement some respect, man, to, 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 to a fellow biker. That's what you need right. to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And um, what is it? It says, what's the proper protocol, which I hope most people know. What's the proper protocol in passing? A one percent or whatever. Well, if they're in the pack, you by yourself, 
give up some, some a girth in the lane and you ease right. pie. Acknowledge it. If you if they glance over at you, acknowledge mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and ease on pass. Mm-hmm. Now when you get in front of them, then you crack the whip and go. Get on about your business. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, that's showing some respect when you pass a, a 1% pass. Right. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to, not to get off track right here, mm-hmm. we got Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin asked a question, but I see Mecca answered it for you, so I'm not even going to really get into that, um, especially when you say that they're not a uh, Let me see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm pretty pretty good so far. Like I said, I wanted to bring you in here, like I said, because to me, Technically, the documentary and whatnot was really your idea. And actually, since I'm on that, what made you think of even bringing them guys in there, like Guzmano and all them, to do the documentary? Just to get the exposure. Just let the, the folks know that, uh, again, we got one more than one gear. Right. And uh, we're still out there. Right. Right. That's right. We're still out there. I mean, Guzmano's cool. I still yeah. talk to him till this right? day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Him and his son. Me, man. Oh, you yeah. already know I am. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I sure will. Actually, I'll hit him tomorrow and let him know. Because, uh, like I said, I still kind of conversate with him every now and then. Him and uh, Bruno. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. They actually came to my shop one time when I had my barber shop on Pine Street before it burnt down. Uh, and they gave me some... Uh, uh, car show tickets once before. They flew out here from wherever they're from. Mm-hmm. They was like, hey, you want to go to a car show? I said, yeah. Ended up meeting them in downtown L.A. They slid me right up in there. So, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. cool. He's good kid, man. He yeah, it was right cool. Okay, okay. So, <clears throat> uh, the con- the question that, uh, what is this thing that, oh, that, man, I, like I said, I hope I'm saying your name right. Uh, Kiran asked now and then Mecca replied not at all not our beef mm-hmm. but what if you're the dominant for that 99% club oh then then we do deal with it okay at that at that level of the game because we don't want no beef in the first place right and to keep it 100 because I hate to say it but what sometimes happen is the 99 or whatever that's up under the dominant sometimes uses a dominant like a weight Right. Or like a shield or whatever the case. And they'll try to push you issue and say, oh, well, we're backed by such and such. And they right, say we right. can do it. And that's 99% of the time, not the case. Right. Ain't nobody going to tell you to go do something and be okay with it. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so when it comes to that, if it's us, especially, I'm speaking especially from my own point of view, we're always going to kind of get into it to try to squash the beef. Right. I mean, to not let it get no further because at the end of the day, you're still connected to us. Right. You know what I mean? And if it go up from here, you're still connected to us. Right, right. You know what I mean? And you don't know who the other 99% is connected to. You, right. What if they go run to their big brother? You know right, I mean? right, and, right. You know I mean? So we try to nip it in the bud from day one if that is the case. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good stuff. There's a lot of education, in my opinion, that needs to be dealt with. Leah had a lot of good questions, and, and, and she used to be on the motorcycle set. I know that much. But I think that at this day and age, 2022, if you want to know something, you got to go seek it. You do. It, it doesn't just come to you the way it did back then. You know, the way the older brothers would be like, hey, come here. Did it make a difference what club you were from? This is what I was told. They see something that's not right. Hey, come here. Let me talk to you. You know what I mean? That's true. And today, it's 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 different. But go ahead. Oh, another thing I've learned, especially being in my club and being on the set and whatnot, there are some individuals in some of these clubs, and they've been there forever. Mm -hmm. They've never left Compton. They've never left L.A. And even though you've been in your club for 20, 30 years, when it comes to the overall umbrella of this biking culture. You probably know less than half of where it's supposed to go. Wow. You know what I mean? Or how yeah, it yeah. really goes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, with us in Chosen Few, like I said, I think we are black, or especially for myself, because we had individuals on both sides. We had the blacks, we had the whites, we had the Latinos, and they ventured everywhere. Right. So when I came in, I just did the same. I ventured 
everywhere. Right, right. So I'm privy to more than just the rules of the LA set, the association, things like that. There are other organizations that I don't need to name, but they have their own set of rules and right. how they function. I'm part of them too. Mm-hmm. So, and I just kind of bundle them all together, and that's the way I live my, I guess, biking life, or you know what I mean. However, it goes. you buy by abide by all the rules. You just, because they're really not that different. Right. You know what I mean? I think what it is is with us, the rules are so laxed. You know what I mean? So that when an outside entity comes and tries to press the issue, whether it be the one percenters, the outlaw, us, whatever, the set isn't so much ready for it because you've been so lax for so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when someone does try to implement some type of structure, you take it as bullying yeah. or dictatorship. Yeah, I don't want to be over there is. with them because they do it. Yeah. And at the same, and, and I'm gonna speak even bigger than that. Some of that comes from other motorcycle sets across the United States looking at the West Coast. Yeah. Okay, sometimes they, and the smaller clubs may not grasp that because you're so caught up with what goes on here. Mm -hmm. You're so caught up between, you know, not, you know what I mean? City to city. City to city or corner to corner. Yeah. You know, OGs call them liquor stores. You know what I mean? You're you're a liquor store runner when you go from club to club here. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. you know what I mean? Because that's really all you're doing. You're getting drunk here, you're getting drunk there, you're getting drunk there. You're a liquor store runner. So, but when you branch outside of that, like I said, the rules change. The rules mm-hmm. change in a major way. And I think, like I said, because we're in these smaller bubbles, we don't see it like that. Now, you go to the Midwest and down south and whatnot, their biking scene isn't the same as L.A. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They almost have to be intermingled or intertwined. So some rules they have to adhere by you Mm -hmm. know know i mean there's no getting around it because it's in my face on a regular basis not like here in la where right you mean it's so abundant with just the la and saturated in la you don't get the same rules or whatever you might get when you slide up that 15 freeway going to victorville or going to vegas right it's different you know i mean so that's why i say that those are the parts that you know i think are missing with the la part and when they go outside of that and you get pressed by a club that's not on the black set, mm-hmm. now you your hands is up and why are they fucking with me? I don't I don't know what I did. Right. Well, it's because of the shit you got on your vest because you saw it on Sons of Anarchy and thought it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you saw right. it, yeah, you saw it at the uh, motorcycle swap meeting and said, yeah. let, me, let me sew it on. Right. You, know, you, you want to be that extra biker, not understanding the repercussions that it comes from. Yeah. That's why sometimes you look at the bigger clubs, you look at their vests, they don't have shit on, but what right. comes from their club. Right, right. I mean, it, may, it may be convoluted, but everything in that on that vest comes from their, their club. club or represents their club. You'll get other individuals that support this, support that. I got a friend patch from this. and you know what I mean, right. my homeboy gave me this. I don't know what it means, but I know he's a biker, so I'm going to tag it on. Right, right. You know, and then you end up getting your, your, your checked at a gas station because yeah. someone who knows what it means, mm-hmm. why the fuck you got that on? Yeah. Makes sense. No? Yeah. Seems like we got to do a lot of growing all over again. Yeah. Because... I love to travel. I, I love to get out. I, I, you know, I shit. I, I just, I don't get enough of it. I get on my bike, bro, and forget I got a home to go to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, um, and that's why I appreciate when somebody acknowledge, because I'm not, you can't, like, when I got the safety pin, you can't just get it me, to me and tell me, put, what does it mean? Mm-hmm. What is my response if I'm questioned about it? Mm-hmm. Why yeah. do you feel I need this? And that's it. Because you know what I mean? Yeah, because you can get it from someone who's not even in the area you're going to. Right. So, and you cross the wrong ones, you can be like, well, I got it from this club. They can be like, we don't give a fuck who the fuck is that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? They're not even in our area, so why right. would we respect them, the patch, the pen, you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a pessimist, so I always think worst case scenario. Oh, I get you. Yeah. I'm a skeptic, so I, I yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, why well, I like we, 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 we roll in the same way. <laughs> Sir, if you yeah. don't know, you need to ask. Yeah. You absolutely. Absolutely. And, I, and that's one of the things. And, 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 and again, I just, you know, I, I see people with supportive patches on. And, and then I had a conversation with somebody. And they told me uh, that uh, one of my members had on a patch, uh, a supportive patch. I'm like, man, you know, y'all can go somewhere and get into with this particular club that don't get along with that club. Right. And, and y'all can be going through some shit, right. you know. And I'm um, like, man, you need to tell that person to take that off. 
I said, well, why? Right. Because they got it from them people. Right. And them people rock with them like that. Right. So they know what to say. And if you know what comes with it and you put it on. So be it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if you don't know, then you shouldn't put it on. And you got to make sure that whoever you put it on for is going to kind of back you in that right. play. You know right, what I mean? Because right. some will leave you out there hanging. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. We don't leave nobody. If you got our shit on and some man, we're coming to press that because we're going to take it personal. Yeah. That's just kind of yeah. how it goes. You know what I mean? Because we don't mess with nobody else's stuff. Right. I'm going to just keep 1,000. We see some. We don't do your thing. Just yeah. don't mess with ours. Right. Right. You know? A dog is not in the fight. Yes, it's in the backyard. That's it, man. Well, uh, I think we uh, did all right for this evening. It's about to be ten o'clock. We can always do a uh, party, have fun, party yeah. be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to yeah, thank you, Pee Wee, for coming through for me. I appreciate you. You know, I always do anyway. I feel the love, and I want to thank you for inviting me. Man, you already know that. Hope I pass on something. Oh, it's, don't worry don't about it. Take heed of it. I'm going to bring you back. Michael. Yeah, I'm going to bring you back. Don't trip. Yeah. And then I'm bring old Doc Feel Goods. We have two Feel Goods up in here. Man. Man. See who's feeling better. <laughs> yeah. You got to set the right piece of meat up in this joint. Yeah. Yeah. Stop <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Most definitely, brother. All right. I hope somebody got something out of this. Right. I bet you they did. More than enough. So for those of y'all that's tapped in, man, uh, y'all need to share this. Don't just tap in and watch, but share it because he wants to build up the audience as well. Because if you are under him or under one of the other chapters that where you guys are from, you guys getting this all the time. It's the people that you know that's your friend, that's the MC that may not get this because they're 99 percenter. Right. Y'all need to share it so them people can tap in. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah. And we on uh, Instagram as well. I mean, tickling your brain every now and then. I thank you, sir. Dr. You're welcome, Fizz brother. Wheels. Yes, sir. Man, all the time. Appreciate you as well, my brother. Yes, sir. Told you I'm a student, man. I love the education.